Hi everybody, it's Tom from Show Me Coasters and today we're bringing you a new series called The Legacy. Uh, today we're going to be starting with Six Flags St. Louis starting out in the 70s when it first opened and working our way up to present time. We're going to be taking a look at all the rides that have come and gone and those that have stood the test of time. Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. Everybody knows your name. Hi, folks, this is T and Tom from Show Me Coasters. Welcome to the 70s, the age of disco and bell bottoms. While the 70s were quieter than the 60s, we still had our issues, such as Watergate. We were also in the middle of the Vietnam War, and we saw OPEC really come on the rise and raise oil prices. The oil prices, yes. Also, we're coming to the end of the Vietnam War here. And the uh, end of the decade, the, uh, the Iran hostage crisis. So this is gonna be a little trip down memory lane for T and I. Uh, we started coming to Six Flags St. Louis when it was Six Flags over Mid-America in the 1970s. And we have a lot of fond memories of the different rides and attractions that we that grew they up had then. Uh, riding as kids. So I didn't start going to this park till 1979 when I first came to the state. So. The decade of the 70s could be mostly Tom's memories. Tom was in college and in the military in the 80s, so I'll take over in the 80s. So let's take a look at our home park, Six Flags St. Louis. This was the third original Six Flags park ever built, and it opened in 1971 as Six Flags over Mid-America. So these are the 12 rides that opened with the park in 1971, and these are the rides from 72 to 79. Of all the rides that was added in the 70s, uh, a little bit over 20, only six still remain. The Mine Train, the Moon Car, the Log Flume, the Scrambler, the Grand Carousel, and of course, the Screaming Eagle. So of all the rides that has left, uh, I miss a few of them I wish was still at Six Flags St. Louis. My two favorite, I love the Bumper Car, and I also love the... Uh, the Momo the Monster. Yeah, that was uh, that was always one of my favorites also. And I also kind of miss Mississippi Adventure. It was different Oh yeah. in that, you know, it was kind of a leisurely little boat ride, but it was also had Animal a little Trump. bit of action. Yeah, you had they had actors that would shoot at you with, you know, so I don't like remember that at all. And stuff. But I it was fun. It was I don't ever fun. I don't even remember that. I don't know uh, it was replaced by the Thunder River in 1983. And don't forget about, we also had Tom's Twister and the Hanna Barrels, Barrel. yeah, as well as the Highland Fling. That opened in the 70s as yeah, well. Yeah, that, oh, I remember as a nine-year-old, uh, that Hanna Barrel was, oh my God, after you get out, your arm was so tired. Yeah, I mean, that's our version of the teacups from Disney. Yeah, and of course, Tom, uh, what do you call it? Tom's Tom Twister. Twister. My first memory of that was not a good memory, I remember it. We rode and there was a kid like right beside my cousin, threw up on himself and came back at him. <laughs> so, so that is our memory. Uh, you know, from the list here also, I don't remember some of these action discos and stuff. Well, was... the, it's, the disco, I remember the disco. So you know there's that big building that sits next to the station at River King Mine Train. The disco was in there. It's now oh, a haunted house. It's haunted house. Okay. It's a slaughterhouse. But that's where the disco was. Original. Yeah, and of course we don't want to forget there was a haunted house at Six Flags St. Louis. That came from Six Flags Great Adventure. There were like two or three trailer homes with a sign in front of it. Which and last but not least, uh, we forgot to mention the the park's uh, railroad. railroad. That's original from the when the park opened. Folks, welcome to the 80s. The decade of MTV and Reaganomics is in full bloom. Where shoulder pads and big hair aren't just for football players. Yeah, I remember seeing uh, Linda Evans uh, with her shoulder pad. You practically have to grease the door to get her through. And Olivia Newton-John was teaching us how to get physical. 
Welcome to the Decade of Excess. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rides that came to Six Flags St. Louis in the 80s. So these are the rides that were added in the 80s. Welcome to the 80s, my teenage years, folks. Unlike the 70s, during the 80s, a lot of the rides they added are still intact. Except for a few exceptions, such as Jet Scream, Condor, and Rush Street Flyer. Otherwise, most of the rides are operating today. What is your memory of this park the few times that you've been here? Uh, not a lot during the 80s. I never did get to ride Jet Scream. Uh, but I do remember going out there maybe once or twice during the 80s. Also in the 80s, MTV was it's in its heyday. There's always some kind of dance activities. Well, if, uh, the mind train was still active there. But uh, from what I remember, I mean, the park was much smaller, and you only have time to ride four or five rides for the 10 hour that it opens there. Usually, we ride the three uh, roller coasters and the two water ride, and occasionally we have time with late at night and ride some of the dark rides but otherwise you know it was a great memories for me a lot of fond memories with families and friends but the, there's a few rides that maybe we just didn't have time such as uh, with uh, Scooby-Doo and uh, Battle Metropolis that I don't remember Castaway Kids or the Time Tunnel or Pinch and Chills What's your thought of that? Well, I remember Engine Joe's. That was original to the park. That was from when I was a little kid. And it told the story of Tom Sawyer and Becky Thatcher. And then the time tunnel was basically from prehistoric times to dinosaurs up through the space age. But I don't remember the Legends of the Dark Castle at all. Yeah, I don't I was, I that was, was my stationed senior in year Korea high that, during that time. I remember um, after they removed Jet Scream, that area where Batman is today, they, they turned that into a, like a dancing area, you know, until 1995 when Batman was built. Otherwise, you know, I remember when the Ninja was added, I was like, ooh. It, the Ninja wasn't always rough, folks. When it first opened, you know, relocated from Vancouver Fair, it was a pretty good ride. So what was the Jet Scream actually like? It's just like Silver Bullet, sim, uh, same similar ride as... Uh, Shockwave at Six Flags Over Texas. It's a short stop. But, you know, back then there was a state of the art. It was smooth. It's, you know, a lot of the short stop that still around today. It's, it's aging. It's 30, 40 years old. So but back then it was state of the art. You know, it, was, it operated for seven years. At Six Flags St. Louis. Now, what I do remember is those hot, humid summer days at Six Flags St. Louis. Mm -hmm. The lines for Thunder River would just be like three hours. massively long. Yeah, two, three hours. It was a, there wasn't that many rides, maybe 20 rides overall. Yeah, because that was the only way to cool down at the park. Mm -hmm. And the log loop. <laughs> so folks, that's going to be our look at the 70s and the 80s at Six Flags St. Louis. We hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the episode 2 where we'll cover the 90s, the 2000s, and 2010s. Until next time, this is T. And this is Tom. Have a good night. Have a great night.